Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're back on the nerves of the head and neck from chapter seven. Um, and in this portion, we're gonna cover the nerves and then we're also gonna cover the circulation of the head and neck. So like the blood vessels and such. Um, diving right into it. Uh, four cranial nerves innervate the face oral cavity. So you have the trigeminal nerve, which I mentioned in the last video, the facial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve and the hypoglossal nerve. The largest cranial nerve and most important to the dental auxiliaries is going to be the trigeminal nerve, like I mentioned. Um, because it innervates the maxilla and the mandible, the trigeminal nerve divides at the semilunar uh, ganglion into three branches. The op ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve, and mandibular nerve. Um, it says here you can see more in chapter 20 uh, for more information for injection sites. Um, for the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, um, and you can see more in figure 721, um, it innervates the nose, cheeks, the palate, gingiva, and maxillary teeth, uh, the maxillary sinus tonsils, nasopharynx, and other facial structures. Um, it's divided into four branches, so you have the zygomatic, infraorbital, posterior, superior alveolar, and Pterigopalatine. Uh, the pterigopalatine nerve branch. Um, after the uh, maxillary nerve leaves the semilunar ganglion. So if we take a look here, see we have the ophthalmic nerve. It doesn't really point. I see three branches of trigeminal. So you're gonna have the ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular. So somewhere, I'm assuming this is probably like the semilunar, considering it looks like a half moon. Uh, but when you get the maxillary branches, um, one branch becomes the pterygopalatine ter nerve branch and divides into the greater palatine nerve and the lesser palatine nerve. And if we look back at the skull, where you had the greater palatine foramina and the lesser palatine foramina in the roof of the mouth, um, that's where those nerves and probably some blood vessels are going to pass through. And that's probably where a dentist is going to aim in terms of, um, like, uh, numbing the patient. It's probably going to give them a greater nerve block if he numbs in that area. Um, it also goes into the, uh, nasopalatine nerve. Uh, the greater palatine nerve extends downward from the pterygopalatine nerve and reaches the palate through the greater palatine foramen. Um, it serves the soft palate, hard palate, medial gingiva, and mucous membrane as far forward as the anterior teeth. The lesser palatine nerve is a smaller branch that innervates the soft palate, uvula, and tonsils. And then the nasopalatine ner nerve extends anteriorly from the pterygopalatine nerve and exits through the incisive foramen. So if you remember... It comes all the way up here. So right over here is probably where your pterygopalatine is going to go. This nerve innervates the anterior hard palate, oh, gingiva, mucous membrane, and anterior teeth from the cuspids forward. So from your canine forward. Um, infraorbital nerve, um, that's going to articulate with the infraorbital foramen. Um, and that's going to be in the front of the face around in this area. You can see here, so you're going to have the posterior division of the mandibular nerve. So this is actually getting into mandibular nerves. This is what we're looking for. Um, greater di di division of the trigeminal nerve, the trigeminal ganglion, um, pterygopalatine nerve. So you can see where that kind of comes up. Lateral nasal branches, nasopalatine branch of the pterygopalatine nerve. And that comes up through here. And you can see how it kind of branches through to the teeth. Um, so middle superior alveolar nerve is over here. Posterior superior alve alveolar nerve is here. Terigo, let me make sure I said, terigo palatine ganglion is here. So anytime you see kind of like a bundle branch, if you will, that's going to probably be a ganglion. And that's just kind of like a central bundle of, of, of a nerve before it splits. Um, zygomatic nerve, which kind of articulates with the zygomatic bone, if you can kind of picture it, uh, that cheekbone being around, right around this area. Infraorbital nerve, and then you have the, um, see here it says zygomatical facial nerve. Oh, that's under the skull. So yeah, there's your infraorbital foramen, and then there's your actual infraorbital nerve. So you can kind of see how that branches there. 
and that's pretty much that uh, determination. And then you can kind of see here the maxillary nerve, pterygo palatine ganglion. This is so this is going to be more of a close up of this kind of region over here, and how it innervates with the um, superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha, and kind of on the on the inside of the sinus. Um, Turigo palatine canal open, so that's going to be this little canal. Um, branches of the olfactory nerve one. So if you remember the um, the cribriform plate and how it had all the little uh, straining, that's where these nerves are going to come through into the nose, and this is what helps us smell. Um, sphenoid sinus is right, but here uh, posterior, uh, well, anterior, uh, excuse me, superior posterior to it. Um, lateral nasal branches of the nerves. And then greater palatine nerve is over here, lesser palatine nerve. So this is where the foramen come in, and this is where they branch off to. Um, nasal palatine nerve uh, comes through here, so that it hits the, nas uh, the nasal area and the palate. Um, and that's where you're going to have your incisive foramen, um, external uh, nasal nerve, and that's just kind of everything here. So I would definitely take a look at these and kind of get familiar with them so that way you know what's happening. Um, infraorbital nerve, uh, it's another branch of the maxillary nerve. Two nerves come from the infraorbital nerve. It exits through the infraorbital foramen. Uh, these are the middle superior alveolar nerve and the anterior alve alveolar nerve. Um, middle superior supplies the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus, the gingiva, mesial buccal root of the first molar. So first root, mesial buccal. So it actually is going to pretty much be like right there it serves that area if you will um and all the roots of the bicuspid so the premolars the anterior superior alveolar nerve is the next nerve to come from the infraorbital nerve it innervates the anterior maxillary sinus the gingiva the cuspids the laterals and the central incisors so we actually probably want to look more at this instead of the um mandibular i apologize sometimes i go back and forth with them and i know what's going on in my head but you guys might not i apologize um, so that's where this is talking about. So those nerves coming from over here, um, before it exits through the infraorbital foramen, you can kind of see them branching down, like for the premolars and the molars and the third molar. So you know how all of those distant, like uh, they branch off and all connect and form like one big picture, if you will. Um, uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve branches downward from the maxillary nerve. It supplies the gingiva, maxillary sinus, the cheeks. I believe I already talked about this, sorry. Um, zygomatic nerve, it innervates around the orbiculus uh, oculi, um, which is the area around the eye. So it's not the, um, I forgot what I called it earlier, but it's actually the orbicularis, or my goodness, orbicularis oculi. A lot of these words are running together. I apologize. Um, so that's going to be the muscles around the eye, like that picture I showed you earlier. And um, kind of like how the mouth had a round set of muscles around it, the eye does as well. And they both look like orbs. Let me see if I can pull up a picture here. Perfect. Went right to it. So, yeah. If you notice his face, that's the, your orbicularis uh, oculi. Think of the, um, what's it called? Oculus Rift VR set. Um, it kind of covers those things. So if you think Oculus or Oculi, you can remember those muscles. And then we go to the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. So this is actually what we're talking about in this regard now. So you have the posterior division of the mandibular nerve, um, inferior alveolar nerve, buccal nerve, lingual nerve over here, um, mylohyoid nerve, Inferior alveolar nerve again, so it kind of branches from here, comes on down. The hyoid bone, mental nerve at the mental foramen. So you can see how some of this branches down and comes through and services those teeth from the mandible. And then you have the incisive nerve, which goes into the incisal teeth. And then there is your mental foramen and those mental nerves. Uh, terminals of the lingual nerve to the tongue, and that's just kind of where this branch comes down and it services the tongue. So that way you can kind of taste, feel hot and cold, that kind of thing. And your uh, the nerve can send signals to the brain if something's not tasting good, or if um, it's too hot or too cold. Um, these nerves all do those parts of the mouth like that help basically deliver that one message the tooth can give, which is ouch. Um, 
It has the buccal nerve branch, which we discussed, uh, the lingual nerve branch, and you guys can read plenty about this. Um, it passes through the buccinator muscle to the cheek, innervates the buccal mucosa, buccal gingiva, as well as the buccal of the mandibular molars. Um, lingual nerve branch descends from the mandibular nerve to the underside of the tongue. It extends from the posterior to the anterior of the mouth, and it innervates the floor of the mouth and the ventral side of the tongue. Taste buds on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and the lingual gingiva. Um, you go in next to the alveolar nerve branch. It, um, it's the mylohyoid nerve branch, which is the first branch of that branch. <laughs> Think of it like a tree. <laughs> um, it supplies the myel mylohyoid muscle and the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. Um, it enters through the mandibular foramen and runs through the mandibular canal. So if you remember uh, looking in the jaw and like the dips and that one little hole that sits toward the rear, uh, the posterior of it, um, and I can find something later that can probably show you that a little bit better. Um, but that's where you'll find that, bu that bundle of nerves, if you will. Within the canal, the inferior alveolar nerve supplies the mandibular teeth, specifically the molars and premolars, the gingiva, the mucosa, subdivides into the mental nerve branch and the incisive nerve branch, uh, supplies the chin and lower lip area, and the incisive nerve branch uh, innervates the anterior teeth and the labial gingia, gingiva. Sorry. Um, and that's pretty much what you've got for that. Um, it'll be very helpful to you as the dental assistant in the knowing these things. Um, and then it also mentions again, uh, taking another look at chapter 20, anesthesia and sedation. So maybe I'll take a look at that at another day um, and maybe go over a few points on that regard. Um, then we've got circulation of the head and neck. Um, arteries and veins of the face and the oral cavity are near one another. They supply blood and nutrients to the area and drain unoxygenated blood and waste products from the area. So this kind of shows, I apologize, it's getting a little late. This shows the arteries of the face and oral cavity. Um, you can kind of see the brachiocephalic trunk here. And um, this would lead uh, to the superior, um, well, it shows here, this is the subclavian artery. But if I'm correct, this leads to the, uh, well, if these are arteries, then it's probably coming from the aorta. And this is actually supplying blood to the face and brain. So then this one is where you're getting the veins and it's taking um, deoxygenated blood away from the face and brain. And this would lead to the superior vena cava. Um, if you remember any of your um, circulatory system stuff, like from the heart and everything, that's where those two are going to come into play. So remember, red is arteries and blue is usually veins. Um, so then you come up all the way here. Um, definitely, this is 7-24, by the way. I would definitely take a look at this. Um, if there's a way, like, you can take a picture and then maybe wipe these out and um, label them for your own uh, use, like, just so that way you can kind of remember where those are. But what I like to do is start from the bottom or from, the, from a main branch and then divide out, kind of like a tree, like I mentioned with the nerves. So you have the subclavian artery. Um, and if you think of clavicle or collarbone, that's where you're going to get subclavian, so it's going to be under the clavicle. Um, and then you have the vertebral artery, which is going to go through the vertebra. And if you ever look at a spine and like you notice how it's going through all those little, um, foramen there, um, there's a name for that. I forget what it's called, but, um, that's where those, um, the, that's where the vertebral artery is going to, um, service and go through there. Uh, here you have the common carotid artery. Now, typically this is the main vein as I like to call it, but that's actually not how you should describe it. Um, but this is one of going to be one of those main branches of the artery that's going to come up and supply a lot of blood here. Um, we know this is the, as the, um, artery, if you cut it, you're in trouble. Um, and then you have an external and an internal portion of the carotid artery. Now you're going to have these on left and right sides. So these are going to be paired typically, except for that brachiocephalic trunk. Um, lingual artery that comes, it looks like here. So, and that makes sense because your lingual would be your, uh, tongue. So that's going to sit close to under your tongue. Um, inferior alveolar artery, facial artery, maxillary artery, all the way over here, descending palatine. So that one's kind of coming up and going down. 
um, middle superior alveolar ar arteries over here. I mean, this is just kind of like a list of the arteries. I could go on and on, um, but overall, this is just kind of how you're gonna come through and then supply. Like that's just gonna supply the blood. And if you come over here, um, you have the superior vena cava, and this is where you're kind of gonna go backwards. So this is where the branches are taking away the deoxygenated blood. So you have a super, superficial temporal vein, maxillary vein over here, um, anterior retromandibular vein, so it's going to be behind the mandible, sort of, um, posterior auricular vein. Um, if you think auricles or ear, that's kind of where this is coming from, so this one's going to be kind of uh, related to the ear. It's pretty close to the um, external acoustic meatus. Um, posterior retromandibular, retromandibular vein, so that's going to be behind the anterior retromandibular. Um, external jugular, and then internal jugular, this is another vein you definitely don't want cut. Um, common facial vein, so this is just, and common just means it kind of covers a broad area, so you can kind of see where that drains out of. Um, pterygoid plexus of veins, and that's just going to be kind of here near that pterygoid um, suture. If you know, notice that area kind of all sits in that same zone. Um, facial vein and then deep facial vein. So that's going to be kind of deep to the skull. And then that pretty much covers it. There's a lot less veins than arteries. Um, if you think about it, there's less veins because you have kind of gravity doing its work here. Whereas here you kind of have to fight. So there's a little bit more branch out to it. Um, and the chapter here is going to kind of outline and go over like what they do, what they're for kind of thing. And good news. That's pretty much it. Um, and as always, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, I'm going to go over a few pictures really quick if I can. Sorry. Um, to try to see if there's anything else I can show you. Um, just some different views, sort of. And I can always um, send pictures of these as well. Just of, uh, like, say, muscles of facial expression. Superficial uh, muscles of mastication. So those are pretty important. Um deep muscles of mastication so you can kind of get a different and better view of those uh pieces I've been going over so give me just a second let me get myself organized here we kind of take a peek at these actually we're just going to kind of pull this all over 83 and that kind of goes something else that's just the oral cavity skull teeth tooth muscles in relation so that might be helpful oh and that's going to help as well i wonder why i have arteries but not veins to that i apologize folks i should have had myself better organized before starting this video um come here you that's just bones that's mostly bone all right, so we talked about um, carotid and vertebral arteries, um, and this is the lateral view. So um, I'll send a picture of this, but this pretty much covered it just as well as this did. This just is kind of a different-ish view. Um, I would probably relate more to the book just because she's probably going to pull from this. She mentioned that earlier, go by the PowerPoint and the book. Um, I know that there's some conflicting stuff between the PowerPoint and the book, I haven't been able to pin all that down yet. Um, I will be working that over the next couple of days just to try to see if there's something I can do to solve that issue. Um, but here you can see where it's got like the masseter muscle and then the mylohyloid muscle and the buccinator muscles. So you can kind of see the muscles and how some of this ties in, like how it wraps around the glands. There's the tongue and kind of how that all sinks together and becomes one whole picture or in our case, one whole human being. We did use this to discuss earlier, and I'll send this picture as well. Um, just talking about like a anterior view of like the uh, mu muscles of facial expression, um, and you're just gonna have a variety of those. And I'll just um, you can see where you're talking about the or or orbicularis oris, and I believe yeah, the orbicularis oculi. So the orbicularis oculi are here, and the or or orbicularis oris. Sorry, a lot of this stuff's a tongue tying situation. Um, but yeah. And here you have a um, lateral view of muscles of facial expression. And we had one of these kind of in the book. Um, but again, I'll send these 
Um, and these are superficial muscles of mastication and the deep muscles of mastication. I'll send these as well, probably just because it breaks it down a little bit better. And you can get a better view um, of those muscles. So I'll try to get pictures of those as well. And then here you've got, um, I don't know if this shows the platysma. It does not. So the platysma, if you're looking at it, um, I apologize. I know I'm going off on random tangents in different directions. These cards are out of order and I apologize. But the platysma, um, you can kind of see here how some of the muscles that are attaching here to the hyoid bone. Um, but the platysma kind of acts like a sheet that goes over these muscles on the neck. And um, it's honestly like a really thin sheet-like muscle. So I think a lot of these avoid it just because it's hard to describe and hard to like get a good view of. Um, other than laterally. So uh, muscles of the neck. Um, so like you have the clavicle here, so your collarbone, and then you can see your first and second ribs. And then you have the sternocleidomastoid, and then you have another muscle here. It's the muscles that attach to the uh, hyoid bone. Um, and then you have some um, floor of mouth muscles as well as more neck muscles that also attach to the hyoid bone. So you can kind of see how all this connects and how it works. Um, this is the nape of the neck or the root of the neck. So this is just the anterior view. So, um, imagine that the face has been taken off here and you're looking at the, um, what the, would be the anterior view of the spine. So here's your spine and then here's your, uh, ribs or excuse me, your sternum. So like if there was no face and everything here, you're kind of getting an open internal view of that there. Um, side view. So you have your sternocleidomastoid and then here's a somewhat pardon me, somewhat good view of the trapezius and how far it actually goes down. Uh, I kind of think of it like a sheathed wing. Um, and it just kind of covers like the um, shoulder blades and such. Um, tongue, and this is just kind of like the, um, or intrinsic muscles of the tongue. There you go. So inner muscles of the tongue of like what's actually within the tongue. And then extrinsic muscles of the tongue, like the pharynx and larynx, lateral view. So um, this is what, like, see, there's the tongue, and, the, and, what, and this is what would be internal to the tongue. But if you zoom out a little bit, these are the muscles that kind of work around the tongue and help it operate like it should. Um, facial nerves and cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus. So you can kind of see, um, like, how the nerves kind of branch around the face and the head, like, kind of just swirl out and come and do their thing. Um, I would look at it like, I believe, zooming in, G, I think G should be the actual trigeminal, nope, stylohyloid, is the trigeminal nerve on here? I think I'll try to find something on the actual trigeminal nerve and like how it um, branches, but for now we can just use the book. I might check out those head and neck anatomy cards uh, in the sim lab again, um, but that just kind of goes over... Um, kind of how it operates around the muscles. I don't have one that does like the muscles, nerves, and like the veins and uh, arteries. That would be ideal, but unfortunately I don't have that one at the moment. Um, but for now, I'm gonna cut off there. Um, I think I've uh, bored you guys enough and like blasted you enough with all of this information. Again, um, please feel free to ask me questions at any time and I'll try to break it down further um, in person. A lot of it I'm still learning as well as we're doing this, so um, it, it makes it a little harder to teach in this at this level, but I do my best. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Hit me up on the group chat, um, but have a great night.